okay, my name is Melissa Amundsen, and my um, outbreak story is um, in regards to the Western Africa Ebola outbreak um, extending from 2014 to 2016. Um, Ebola virus has a vast amount of uh, notoriety. Um, however, overall, it's quite rare. Um, it does have a high degree of mortality and a high case fatality rate. Um, on average, in the literature, the case fatality rate um, is around 50%. However, there are reports um, ranging anywhere from a low of 32% to a high of 88%. This virus was initially um, first described about 40 years ago in 1976. Um, and since that initial um, description of the Ebola, Ebola virus in humans, it's been, um, there have been about 20 historical outbreaks um, since. Um, <clears throat> Ebola virus is in the Phyloviridae uh, family of negative uh, stra single-stranded RNA viruses. It has five subdivisions, four of which affect humans and one of, um, of which primarily affects swine. Um, it was a Zaire um, subspecies that was the um, agent responsible for the 2014 outbreak. Um, <clears throat> geographically, uh, prior to this outbreak, uh, Ebola virus has been noted uh, to be <clears throat> found in areas of the Congo, Uganda, um, and the swine version uh, has been reported in the Philippines. Um, transmission can be animal um, to human or human to human. Uh, fruit bats are the presumed uh, host uh, animal. And actually, the index case uh, for the 2014 outbreak is thought to be a young child um, via zoonotic transmission from a bat um, in December 2013 in Guinea. Um, the signs and symptoms of Ebola are um, extremely high fever, uh, headache, muscle aches, fatigue, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, confusion, weakness, um, with or without uh, unexplained bleeding from the eyes, gums, uh, urine, uh, rectum, or um, underneath the skin. Uh, symptoms typically appear two to 21 days after contact with an affected patient, um, and oftentimes or early in the outbreak can be confused with cholera, malaria, or influenza. Uh, of note, uh, the 2014 uh, outbreak uh, was presumed to be cholera. Uh, the 2014 outbreak is quite unique for a number of reasons. Um, first and foremost, uh, the size and severity uh, was unprecedented, um, with the death toll exceeding 11,000. Um, in addition to that, the region of Africa that was affected uh, was a first um, for Ebola virus. Uh, again, historically, Ebola virus has been limited to Central Africa, Congo area, um, and this was a Western, out, um, Western Africa outbreak primarily affecting um, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. Uh, in addition to the unusual geographic location, this was also um, a large multinational involvement with um, final cases being reported as far as the United States um, but also in Nigeria, Mali, uh, United Kingdom, and Spain. Um, the other component that made this quite unique was the urban involvement. All other um, historical outbreaks have been limited to rural um, regions of Africa and have been more self-limiting. Uh, the trigger point for the investigation was a um, more unusual story, uh, a sample was sent to the Pasteur Institute on, um, <clears throat> in late March uh, for an investigation regarding loss of fever, um, and the uh, sample uh, was reported to be Ebola. This uh, sample was reported on March 23rd, and that's when the um, WHO publicly announced um, the outbreak. At this time, um, there had already been 49 confirmed cases and 29 deaths. Um, interestingly, the first official medical alert um, for a diarrheal disease um, causing death was um, in January 20 was on January 24, 
where um, the a health post informed district health offices that there have been five cases of fatal diarrhea. Um, and this is where it was presumed to be cholera. Um, however, on March 13th, so nearly two months later, um, Guinea uh, Ministry of Health opened up an investigation for uh, loss of fever, um, which is another hemorrhagic uh, viral fever um, endemic to that area. Um, and that's where the samples were sent, and it revealed that the uh, agent was actually Ebola. So um, some public health surveillance that um, played into the outbreak. Uh, there was a heavy reliance on community-based surveillance um, once um, there was an organized response. Uh, early on in the outbreak, um, <clears throat> there was a, quite a disorganized response in particular um, because this was affecting uh, three of the poorest countries in the world, um, three countries that had never dealt um, with Ebola virus in the past. Um, and um, countries that uh, even had inability to test for the virus. Um, once there was a more organized response um, <clears throat> and the WHO uh, began more, um, more and more pleas for help from the international community. Um, case identification uh, became tantamount for tracing the contacts and hopefully preventing additional cases. Um, <clears throat> in addition to contact, contact tracing, uh, quarantine was also implemented um, if the contacts um, were traced to have been in proximity to an Ebola patient. Um, alert, pa alert patients were utilized as a way for the public to be informed um, and what should or shouldn't be reported to local health centers. Um, WHO also created a roadmap um, to the Ebola epidemic and it included vigilant uh, surveillance. Um, the surveillance consisted, again, of case alerts, investigations with lab testing, identification of contacts, contact tracing, and um, contact monitoring with the eventual implementation of quarantine. Um, the lab methods used um, to detect um, Ebola virus um, <clears throat> are well known. Um, they're um, reverse transcripts, transcriptase, PCR, and immunohistochemistry. Um, the dilemma in the outbreak was that many of the hospitals and labs in Western Africa not only um, didn't have the correct equipment to do this testing, but also did not have the trained staff to do the testing appropriately. Um, per the CDC, uh, the detection of Ebola antigen in any body fluid, tissue, or clinical specimen by antigen detection enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA as we know it, or immunohistochemistry, or demonstration of serum IgM by ELISA, or de detection of Ebola nucleic acid by PCR. Um, these are all considered um, valid testing um, processes for the confirmation of Ebola. Um, <clears throat> The case definition at the time, um, which was defined by WHO, uh, were three of the following. Um, sus sudden onset fever with reported, or I'm sorry, su suspected or alert cases were defined as onset, sudden onset fever with reported contact of a, an Ebola patient, suspected Ebola patient, dead or sick animal, any unexplained high fever with three of the following. Um, there's a large list, including diarrhea, headaches, um, any unexplained bleeding, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And then uh, finally, a suspect case also includes anyone with unexpl unexplained bleeding or an unexplained death. Confirmed cases were essentially all of the above with lab confirmation testing of Ebola virus. Um, specifically, uh, lab confirmed cases must test positive for the virus antigen either by detection of virus RNA by PCR or by detection of IgM antibodies directed against the Marburg or Ebola. Um, <clears throat> the, the, there was not one single study uh, that looked at this outbreak specifically. There are 
actually hundreds of pieces of literature on this uh, unprecedented uh, study or an unprecedented event. Um, however, uh, WHO collected epidemiologic uh, results um, and the final totals were interesting as far as the number of countries affected, um, <clears throat> which I previously listed, and then the, the um, final morbidity and mortality uh, statistics um, for the three mainly affected countries, uh, which with the final death toll between the three countries um, totaling at 11,308. Um, and these uh, charts and graphs can be reviewed in, in my um, document that's <clears throat> included. Of note, um, an interesting uh, study that I looked at um, focused its analysis on cases reported in Sierra Leone. Um, and they compared both rural and urban cases. Um, and in addition to that, they um, detailed the morbidity associated with um, the elderly and the very, very young. So out of their almost 38,000 alert cases, only 4,900 approximately were confirmed or probable. 63% were affected in urban areas, so the transmission was higher, and 33% uh, uh, from rural. That being said, the rural population had a higher um, overall case fatality rate as opposed to the urban, um, the urban population. And um, sadly, uh, children under 12 months of age had a case fatality rate of 73%, and those over 65 years of age had a case fatality rate of 69%. In this study, the urban um, average case fatality rate was only 36.7%. So uh, children under 12 months of age had double the case fatality rate um, in this study population in Sierra Leone from 2014 to 2015. These statistics can also be found in my uh, Word document that's um, pasted into Canvas. The short and long-term control methods that were implemented um, primarily short-term control, um, which included quarantine, which included um, contact tracing, um, uh, public health surveillance, and um, an emphasis was placed on burial practices. Uh, numerous studies have reported that the burial practices of Western Africa um, significantly contributed to the spread of Ebola virus. Um, this is due to the fact that um, the way uh, in their society, the way uh, the dead are honored, many um, relatives come from very, very far distances um, to honor the dead, and this contributed to the outbreak in, in addition to the well-known um, handling of the dead body, which included washing, by relatives by hand, um, and so they had direct contact um, with uh, Ebola virus. So um, population education on burial practices became tantamount, um, in addition to um, safe sex practices because it has been noted to be spread um, via sexual contact. Um, during this outbreak, a uh, quarantine of 21 days was utilized um, for those who had contact with an Ebola patient or a suspected Ebola patient. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, despite all these uh, well-intended interventions, the, the quarantine and um, the alteration in customary social practices created a significant amount of distrust in the local population. Um, which resulted in um, misidentification of cases due to um, underrepresenting symptomatology, um, secret, secret burials um, taking place to hide from the outsiders um, that were trying to change um, social norms, and um, also shielding of, of sick folks. So these, these three um, things were significant contributors to the persistent spread of the virus. Um, the active treatments that were uh, provided during the outbreak are quite limited. 
and treatment has not changed much over the last 50 years. Um, treatment is primarily supportive, consisting of fluid rehydration via oral or IV fluids, electrolyte replacement, and treatment of symptomatology. Um, during the outbreak, however, some experimental options were um, used, such as um, survivor, survivor plasma infusions and um, some vaccination trials were initiated. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the early aspects of the Ebola outbreak were um, mistakes occurred. Uh, however, it doesn't appear that there was a gross cover-up. Uh, the main error that did occur uh, was the misidentification of the early cases. However, as we say in medicine, um, when you hear hoofbeats, uh, think horses, not zebras. And um, cholera was notable to be endemic at the time, and there had previously never been a reported case of Ebola, so it's natural that this wouldn't have been um, the first thought. But other arguments can be made that there was a significant delay um, in a sense of urgency when um, WHO initially <clears throat> confirmed the cases and the outbreak of the Ebola virus. And this um, delay of um, action by both the local governments and the world, um, uh, world leaders outside other countries, uh, including the United States. Um, lastly, uh, the public health providers, although well-meaning, um, were largely from Western countries and uh, an enormous amount of uh, distrust developed between local populations and the outside um, <clears throat> healthcare providers due to the fact that many customs were um, attempted to be changed and was met, was met with resistance from the local population. Um, <clears throat> the long-term public health consequences uh, were pretty significant. Um, it generated an inter a renewed and international interest in this, the possible severity of Ebola virus and prompted a significant amount of research that has gone into um, vaccination trials um, <clears throat> that are currently being brought to market. In addition, uh, there were huge uh, financial consequences. It's estimated that, um, you know, overall the cost of the outbreak was $4.3 billion. Um, but in addition to that, um, there were significant losses in GDP to the three most affected countries, um, secondary to the crisis, loss of manpower, um, loss of an employed population for mining, agriculture, manufacturing, etc. Um, intangible consequences, in particular defined by MSF, have been a notable increase in food insecurity, decreased vaccination rates for all um, diseases, decreased access to primary care and maternal health. Um, this is likely secondary to um, a significant loss of healthcare providers who were treating the early patients um, unknowingly being um, contaminated by Ebola virus. There's a significant um, psychological sequelae from the survivors, and um, about 30,000 orphans were created in Western Africa secondary to the outbreak. Um, about $1 billion has been earmarked um, to the Western Africa like Ebola Recovery and Eradication Program, so that's a positive. Um, this outbreak led to the first ever United Nations Security Council emergency meeting for a public health crisis. Um, again, uh, garnering international attention to um, a disease oftentimes uh, Westerners think will not really affect them ever. Um, there was renewed pharmaceutical company interest in vaccination programs. Ring vaccination trials were initiated during um, the Ebola outbreak, uh, similar to what was utilized for smallpox. And um, significant processes, progress was made um, in point of care testing, as that was another major um, problem with the outbreak was misidentification or inability to identify Ebola due to lack of resources in the lab. 
Um, finally, the largest cohort ever, uh, 17,000 approximate survivors are now uh, available for evaluating post Ebola syndrome, um, which uh, has its uh, own set of complications and is rather poorly understood, but hopefully with this new set of survivors, uh, it can be better understood. And that's all I have.